Hey guys, Randy here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at a tie-down anchor. Now, tie-down anchors come in all shapes, they come in all sizes. We've got tons of different types here at eTrailer. This happens to be one that I like quite a bit. This is a recessed D-ring tie-down. And essentially, you get an excellent connection point. It's got a 2,000 pound safe working load limit, so it gives us great strength. But it's not something you're going to be tripping over all the time. And for me, that's a big deal. This one's going to be from Brophy. And as you can see, it's designed to fit down and in whatever it is you're trying to anchor something to. We're using it on a flatbed utility trailer here. This would also work out really well in enclosed trailers or even out on the dock if you wanted to, to strap down a couple of kayaks or something. Keeping that nice low level kind of stance when it's not in use, it sits right down in the pocket here on each side, is really ideal for walking past it as you're trying to load and unload things. Whether you're trying to load washers and dryers and you need to scoot them a little bit, or really anything that you're trying to load up, if it gets hung up on something, it's kind of an aggravation. Then you gotta get out, figure out where it's hung up. In this case, all we're really gonna have sticking up are the four bolt heads when not in use. Then it's very easy just to tip it up, connect our strap, our rope, or whatever we're gonna be using to secure items with, and get it all secured down. Now as far as making our connection, we just need to lift up on that D-ring. This is one of my favorite parts about this one. The ring's designed to work with just about any type of strap you're going to have, with the exception of the flat hooks, of course. And the thing I really like about it, one of my favorite aspects of it, is regardless of the direction that we pull, it rotates that way. That gives me a lot of confidence, knowing that I'm pulling on the right angle going to my item. As you can see, it's got the nice heavy steel construction, really well made in my opinion, and it also has that clear zinc finish on it. Now that's going to help make sure that we don't have to worry about rust and corrosion for a very long time. I mean, if you're using it on an enclosed trailer or somewhere where it's covered, it's not really a big deal, but on a utility trailer like this, I think it's excellent to have that protection on there, so we're not going to have to deal with any of those issues. Here's that backing plate and what it's going to look like. As you can see, it's got a nice, large width to it. This helps to spread the energy out over a greater area. See the bolts pass all the way through. Just provides us a lot of support here on that bottom side. And for most wood applications, or any weaker material for that matter, I definitely recommend getting that so you can get it nice and secure. You can see overall we're looking at about six and a quarter inches total diameter, just to give you an idea of the size you can expect. Usable portion inside to inside on our D-ring. It's gonna be about three and a quarter at its widest. Now we have other recessed D-rings available as well. This one happens to be from Cargo Smart. It's very similar in capacity. I think this one comes in about 1,667 pounds. I like it. I like the way it, it sits down there nice and flush. And we do have a, a ring here. It's a little bit smaller, I think, than what we're getting on the other one. The thing I like about the other one is the way it pivots. So if we were trying to run a strap from this point coming back, it looks pretty good. But when we start pulling from the side, my confidence wanes in it just slightly. I know it's going to hold up. I know it's going to do the job. It just kind of looks weird pulling at a weird angle on it. That's why I think for a recessed D-ring, this would be the way I would go. This would be the one I'd own. I like the angles. I like that it's a little bit larger, has slightly higher capacity. And as far as finish quality, it's about hand in hand. Now, of course, these aren't gonna do you any good without a good set of working straps. If you've already got some and they're in good condition, great. If not, we offer several different sizes, several different weight capacities here at E-Trailer. One I recommend for your light to medium loads going to be the e-trailer four pack kit with a carrying bag. Uh, we've got keepers on the end, we've got the holder here for the strap, our handle's a little bit nicer, a little bit larger. They're just, they're just, we've basically taken all the good things we liked about all different types of straps that we carry, put it all in one kit. Now the tie down is going to be available a few different ways for you depending on your needs and your situation you're going to be mounting it to. We'll talk about that a little bit more once we get into the install portion. But we've got just the single. It's going to have the hardware you need to mount it and the backing plate. We've got a four pack that same way. So four tie downs, four backing plates, four sets of hardware. Or you can get just the tie down itself. If you have your own idea, maybe you're going to weld or bolt it on in a different application. You can just get the tie down so you're not going to have that extra stuff that you're not really going to need. 
Now for your installation process, there's kind of two ways you can go about it. This is gonna be about seven eighths of an inch thick from where it mounts to the bottom. So in some situations, and we've done it here before, you're gonna use a hole saw regardless. So we've got our hole saw. The part that's gonna be recessed is four and three eighths of an inch, and again, seven eighths inch, so about an inch thick. So if you want to, you can use your hole saw, you can mark it, take it down about an inch, and then you can chisel out the wood that remains in there. Now I like to do it a little bit differently. What I like to do, I like to go all the way through. That way I know there's not gonna be any water sitting in that recess. Not gonna to have to worry about that. Now, if you did wanna recess it and leave some wood in there, you could drill several holes through it to give it an area to run out. But I think it's simpler and I think it's easier just to go straight through. I'm using a four and three eighths inch hole saw. The hole, generally with the hole saw, it's just a little bit bigger than what it states. So it should be just about ideal for this situation. So we're gonna get it started. You see, we've marked our four holes. I just used the D-ring as a template there. And we need to get these holes really straight in and out. Basically, we've got that backing plate that's gonna go on the bottom. So that matches up with those holes pretty well. So as long as we can get these through there straight, it shouldn't give us a whole lot of issue when we go to put it on the back. If you get these in there crooked, a lot of times what you'll have to do is kind of open this up, open your hole up a little bit. That can kind of be a pain. So get them as straight as you can. I'm gonna start with a little bit smaller bit just so it doesn't walk as much as I go down through the wood. Then we'll finish that up with a 5 16ths to get to the proper hole size. And once you get your bolts down and through there, we'll head to the underside and get our backing plate on. Now I like the backing plate for most wood applications. Um, even with this nice thick wood here, I think it's a good idea to have it underneath there. If you're going to be mounting this to steel, I mean, you could even weld these onto a, a trailer if you had a solid steel floor. Use appropriate hardware. Uh, you might need 5 16 inch bolts. You might be able to use this hardware, but you're not really going to need the backing plate. So if you've already got it, I'd probably go with just the base. If you don't, or if you're going to be using it in a wood application, it's not going to hurt to have this on there. It gives us that great weight capacity. Now we can get our backing plate installed and it's okay to kind of try it on a few different angles. It's pretty square, but if it doesn't go one way, just rotate it the other way, see if it'll go. You can see that's a little snug, but I think we can get our hardware started on that. You'll use whatever hardware you've decided, or if you got the kit, your lock washer and follow that up with a nut. And once we've got everything started, we'll use our 13 millimeters, and we'll just get them cinched down here, uh, 13 millimeter top and bottom. Once you've got them all snug at that point, they're going to be ready for use. Then of course at that point, you just need to strap down your load. See, it does a great job. Creates a really good anchor point for you. So as you can see, it's a nice, heavy duty, secure attachment point. I think if you're looking for something recessed, this is gonna be just about ideal for your situation. This would definitely be something I'd own and install on my trailer.